So what did you 30. do when you were out of money? Like you were living in LA? Yeah. I assume. I got jobs. Yeah? You like know? regular jobs or yeah. acting jobs? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, if I was getting acting jobs, I wouldn't have ran out of money. Um, like no. what did you do? Is that like what? what I kind of immediately jobs? went and got two jobs. I worked at the front desk at Equinox, which is a boozy, nice. bougie gym in, yeah. in West Hollywood or all over LA, but I worked at the West Hollywood one. So went and got a, a job at Equinox and then um, a job at a, a kind of eclectic gift shop uh, scarf company in Venice that my friends ran and I worked there for like three years. Can you dive more into that? A scarf company? What yeah. did you do? Did you sell scarves? Yeah, I ran the shop. I <laughs> sold scarves. I traveled. I was nice. a traveling scarf, scarf salesman <laughs> for a time, which I love is that. pretty strange. You can listen to the first episode of your podcast. You talk about that and it is a great story. That's yeah, amazing. yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it was a time in my life, man. I was surviving and just like figuring it out and kind of getting this diversion from this path of my life that had been so clear. I mean, since I was a kid, it was just like, this is what I'm doing. I'm an actor and it's all gonna work out. Right. It, my second pilot season, I'm on Neds, right? Like, and then all of a sudden I was 25 and had to go get some jobs and my parents got divorced and everything like crumbled and I was just like surviving for a while mm -hmm. while still auditioning. But really that was a, a rough but good learning time in my life. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine uh, like being at Equinox and like I'm sure people recognize you, right? Occasionally, <laughs> You're like, uh. beyond just being recognized, that would happen, but the, the weirder emotions came when I would see people that I know and work with. Mm. Like That's so hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I had worked with Terry Crews, and he, he like came into our Equinox once, and I didn't even say hi to him. Like, I felt some kind of ego, you know, some yeah. kind of weird, like, even though Terry's so nice, he never would have judged me for shit. And mm -hmm. like, it's LA, you gotta work sometimes to pay your bills, like it's fine. But I felt like just awkward yeah. seeing him and I wasn't <laughs> quite like accepting that point in my life. And then uh, at my Venice shop, I saw um, Alexander Ludwig, uh, who I had known through auditions for a few years, and like he was coming off like season fucking twelve of Vikings or whatever, yeah. and and uh, Hunger Games and all this success, and I'm there like, like can yeah, I show bro. you how to wear this scarf? <laughs> and uh, I, it really was humbling, you know, because yeah. the truth is like, it did hurt, like it hurt my ego, it hurt what I want my life to look like, it hurt mm -hmm. what I want to be doing, but then on some level, I also understand like it's not that big a deal. Like, right. like but I'm just I mean, working a job, like it's fine. This can go transcend so much further than just like actors because even someone like, if you start your own business and it doesn't work out and people know you started your own business and then you, you're you like, okay, well that didn't work out. And then you're thinking, I know I would be thinking like, oh, everyone thinks I'm like just a failure. failure and like, yeah. And it's like, really nobody gives a fuck. No. Like nobody cares what you're doing. Not that <laughs> like, much. Everyone's on their phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if they do, like fuck them. <laughs> Truly, yeah. yeah. If they actually care, fuck them. Yeah. And most people, they don't give a fuck. And yeah. they just want to know like, hey, how are you? Are you yeah. good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you're not doing that thing anymore? You're doing something else? Okay. Right. No I remember cares. I like pivoted a few times in my business and I'd have to call like my clients and tell them like, Hey, I'm kind of going this way with it. And I would like get so worked up over it. But then afterwards I'd like, they didn't, they didn't care. They're like, cool. Good for you. I'm so glad you're like doing that other thing now. That's I'm, like, it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all in our head. Like, and I yeah. think, I think you have to pivot. I think that's what our twenties, especially, I mean, I think mm -hmm. it goes on through our whole lives, but yeah. now that I'm in my thirties, I can look back at the decade of twenties and be like, I feel like you gotta be pivoting a lot because you don't know your path yet. Mm -mm. You don't know it coming out of college. Like you don't know how it's gonna go. Even if you know what you wanna do, you do not know how you're gonna get there. What that's gonna look like, yeah. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. gonna change and you're gonna change. And like, I feel like you have to be pivoting and failing and feeling the identity crisis that comes with it yeah. and then shifting. I feel like that's like part of that transition. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I like, what I want to ask you, like, do you have anything that like a mantra or something that you like live by? I'll give you an example. Mine is if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. So like anytime I'm thinking about something or wanting to do something, if I don't feel that like hardcore, like even if it's something as simple, like my friends asked me to go out to a bar. Yeah. If I'm not like, hell yes, I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But like, and then when it comes to my business, I ask myself that all the time. Like, mm. do I want to do this? Because if it's not a hell yes, my energy is not behind it yeah. and it's never going to come across well, you know? Yeah. I don't know that I have it in like clear mantra form, but I have over the last few years been getting more acquainted with what a yes feels like inside of me. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a more subtle listening. 
and yeah, I don't know that I have it in like words, but I have gotten better at just trusting when I'm making a decision, trusting like what my answer is and going with it and whatever happens, like being like, yeah, I know where I, I chose that from. Right, you can like feel it better now. Yeah, yeah. And, and I used to be like a major uh, people pleaser. I used to be a yes to everything mm. that anyone else was saying or I, I never wanted to make anyone uncomfortable because I'm a sensitive, emotional person. So in my head, it's Pisces. like, I never want to. Yeah, <laughs> Are you a Pisces? Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, I never want to cause other people emotional anything. But turns out that's a terrible way to live. And like, then I was like giving up my own needs and wants and boundaries all the time. So I used to say yes to everything. And I used to not actually be in touch with like, what do I actually want? And over the last few years, it's been a great uh, journey getting in touch with that.